Na na mtazamaji ni siku nyingine tarehe ni tano mwezi ni wa tisa mwaka wa elfu mbili na kumi na tisa moja kwa moja kutoka chumba chetu kuu cha matangazo hapa jijini Nairobi ambapo ni afueni kwa wakenya hii ni baada ya seneti na bunge kuweza kufikiana kutokana na mzozo wa ugavi wa mapato nchini. Na bila shaka mtazamaji ni baadhi tu ya taarifa ambazo tumezipa kipa umbele hapa katika uh, upeo wa TV 47 awamu ya saa tatu vile vile tumeweza kutambua ya kwamba chembe chembe as a DNA zimeonyesha ya kwamba mtoto ambaye alidaiwa kuwa wa Keno Cod basi ni wake. Langu jina ni Andrin Kilemi. Nami nafahamika kama Clifford Ndubi mtangazaji wa ishara ni Josephine Ouko. Lakini kwanza kabisa tupate vidokezo. Kwenye vidokezo, matokeo ya chembe chembe za DNA yaonyesha marehemu Ken Okoth ndiye baba wa mtoto wa Anne Ndhombe. Namna hiyo seneti afikiana na bunge kusuluhisha mzozo wa ugavi wa mapato. Na tutakueleza ni kwa nini wenyeji wa Rosta Main katika kaunti ya Kakamega wamo katika hatari ya kupata magonjwa ya mlipuko. Nam karibu sana tuandamane sawa hadi tamati. Ni afueni kwa wakenya hii ni baada ya bunge la seneti kutatua mzozo wa ugavi wa mapato nchini. Hii ni kwa mujibu wa kiongozi wa walio wengi katika bunge la seneti Kipchumba Murkomen ambaye alidokeza kuwa swala hilo limetatuliwa licha ya baadhi ya viongozi wa bunge hilo kusema hawakuridhishwa na uamuzi wa bunge la kitaifa kuzipatia kaunti shilingi bilioni 316.5. Na mwanahabari wetu Salome Mwirori aliweza kufuatilia taarifa hiyo na anatueleza zaidi. This has been a difficult decision for the Senate. But the Senate has been faced with a situation where it has to rise to the calling and put the overall national interest above short-term partisan considerations. We take solace in the fact that sometimes to win the war, one must be prepared to yield some battles. Tishio la gavana weekly for Paranya la kulemaza shughuli za kaunti tarehe 16 mwezi huu limeambulia patupu licha ya kuwa kutatuliwa kwa swala hilo kumefanywa shingo upande and the senate is cognizant that we are fast approaching the end of the first quarter of the financial year and counties are yet to receive their share of national national raised revenue the country is faced with the real prospect of shutdown of service at the counties this would have been have a disastrous effect on critical sectors such as agriculture and health. For this reason, and for reasons we have explained, the Senate following a meeting held today, 5th September 2019, has made the painful but patriotic decision to advise our negotiators at the ongoing mediation process to agree to the allocation of the 316.5 billion as the equitable share of the nationally raised revenue to be allocated to the counties. Lakini maseneta wanashikilia kuwa waangali watapigania kuongezewa kwa mapato ya county kwani katiba mpya ilikuwa inaazimia kuhakikisha kuwa wakenya wanajivunia ugatuzi. The decision taken by the Senate is without prejudice to its position in High Court petition number 284 of 2019 which suit we will continue to pursue as the petition seeks a determination on the constitutionality of the Appropriation Act 2019 rather than the quantum of the monies to be allocated to the two levels of government. It is similarly without prejudice to any other matter in court in which the Senate is partly and in which similar issues are in contention. On this, we remain steadfast. Kwa sasa counties zitapata shilingi bilioni 316.5 na si bilioni 333.6 kama ilivyopendekeza seneti. Salome Mwirore TV 47. Nam mtazamaji tukiachana na taarifa ya ugavi wa mapato sasa tuangazie taarifa nyingine ambapo matokeo ya chembe chembe za DNA za aliyesemekana kuwa mtoto wa mwenda zake mbunge wa Kibra Keno Koth zimeonyesha kuwa asilimia uh, 99.9 ni mtoto wake asili. On behalf of our client and Dhumbi and today the results are out. We did conduct three different 
samples to three different laboratories, some locally and some international. We have results that we have filed before the court. And those results, my good Wakili will read the results. But for the sake of the child and for the sake of everybody, we will not disclose the detailed graphical nature of the results. The results do read as follows. The alleged father is not excluded as the biological father of the tested child. Based on the testing results obtained from the analysis of the DNA, loci listed above the prob probability of paternity is 99.999%. The results are consistent with the alleged father being the biological father of the child tested. Na mkuingine yako mtazamo wa ni kwamba chama cha walimu uh, wa shule za upili na vio kimeomba serikali ya kitaifa kuhakikisha kuwa shule za upili zinapata fedha za kusaidia kuendesha shughuli za muhula wa tatu. Na Katibu Mkuu wa Kupet Akelo Misori amesema kwamba amekanusha matamshi ya Katibu Mkuu wa Wizara ya Elimu Belio Kipsang kwa fedha za muhula wa tatu zimetolewa kwenye shule. Hali kadhalika Misori ameiomba serikali kupitia waziri wa elimu George Magoha kuhakikisha kuwa mfumo wa NEMIS unawafaidi wanafunzi na walimu kwa njia inayostahili. That uh, the heads of schools in Kenya are crying over disbursement of funds because the third term which was expected to get the 20% of the total capitation has not been covered in the disbursement. And you remember this is the shortest term that we have. It is not only short, but this is also the term when schools will close early because of the national exams. We expected the government machinery to work in tandem with the school terms. When before the school term begins, we expect disbursement because this disbursement of funds one, they go to buy pieces of chalk. They are also going to, to fence, uh, 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 a leaking fence, and th that is what is there. So we have no formal engagement. In fact, we have been reduced to communicate to them through this forum because you write a letter there, you make a phone call, nobody dares to respond positively to address the need on the ground. It means that if there are any procurement issues to be addressed to a uh, to towards marrying schools, it is going to be impossible to do. And that means that schools are running like uh, somebody's kiosk. Na mtazamaji katika tarifa nyingine ni kwamba hileo, shirika la wazi konsorti ya militoa ripoti yao kuhusiana na mapendekezo ya BBI. Na katika ripoti hiyo iliotolewa mapema leo hapa jijini Nairobi, ineleza wao kutokuwa na imani kwa ni swala la wazi ni donda sugu. Vile vile waliongeza kwa kusema kuwa maswala yanayoangaziwa katika BBI yapo katika katiba huku wachanganuzi kama vile Yashpal Gai na Tom Wolf na mwenyekiti wa uwazi wakihudhuria yupo Tony Mwirigi na maelezo zaidi. Safari ilianza tarehe 9 Machi mwaka 2018 wakati vigogo wawili kiongozo pinzani Raila Odinga na Rais Uhuru Kenyatta waliposalimu amri ya uiano nchini na baadaye kuundwa kwa tume ya BBI inayoongozwa na seneta wa Garissa Yusuf Haj. Huku makundi mbalimbali kutoka pande tofauti yakiwa na maoni tofauti, hileo shirika la uwazi konsorti ya mchini limetoa ripoti kuhusiana mapendekezo ya BBI huku mwenyekiti wa shirika hilo akisema uiano hautapatikana kwani kuna masuala tofauti yanayokabili tume hii. Uh, hatuwezi pata uiano wa kutosha maana uh, wamefanya kazi yao miezi zaidi ya mwaka mmoja mpaka wakaongezewa muda lakini kwa zile methods wametumia sidhania kwamba wamepata uh, mawaidha uh, ma, ma, maoni ya kutosha kutoka kwa wananchi na sidhani kutakuwa na uwiano wa kutosha inaonekana uh, building bridges 
ilitengenezwa na predetermined outcome wanajua wana what they want out of it so sidhani watatilia maana ni uh, recommendations zetu Tom Wolf ambaye ni mchanganuzi wa masuala ya katiba alisema kuwa licha ya BBI kusema umetembea katika kaunti mbalimbali hawajafafanua ni kaunti gani na kudokeza swala la uwazi kuwa tatizo let alone any comparisons between one county and another so the, the report really lacks any content analysis that could have i think usefully exploited the very wonderful effort that these people made to go to these hearings in the six counties so i don't know if you felt the report would have been too long maybe you can address that i just as i say as a researcher disappointed that i didn't get more meat uh, in terms of content analysis of what was actually heard um, and that would have also been interesting because by the time the task force produces its recommendations even if Uwazi only went to six counties it would be very interesting to see whether those recommendations reflect what your you and your people heard um, on the ground hukumu matako haya yakitolewa na shirika la uwazi ni imani kuwa bodi ya BBI huenda kasikiliza na kuyapatia kipaumbele nikiripotia TV47 kutoka Nairobi mimi ni Tony Mwirigi na mtazamaji taarifa hiyo yake Tony Mwirigi sasa hivi natupeleka kwenye mapumziko ya kwanza ndani ya upeo wa TV47 makala ya kiwani ya saa 3. Na mtazamaji kumbuka unaweza kuzidi kufuatilia taarifa hizi kwenye mitandao yetu ya kijamii Twitter ni @tv47ke na vile vile @kilemi_andrin na vile vile utanifuata kwenye @clifford_ke. Na usiende mbali. Um, karibu tena mtazamaji shukran sana kwa kuzidi kutazama taarifa za upeo wa TV47 awamu ya saa tatu. Tukisonga mbele na taarifa zetu ni kwamba miezi michache tu baada ya kukamilika kwa usajili wa huduma namba imefichuliwa kuwa idadi kubwa ya wakenya walifeli kuhesabiwa kutokana na ukosefu wa kitambulisho cha kitaifa. Hatua hii ambayo imeshinikiza serikali kuanzisha shughuli ya usajili wa kitambulisho cha kitaifa kwa wale wasio na stakabadhi hiyo muhimu huku Boniface Barasa na anatuarifu zaidi. Kwa mujibu wa Kamishna wa Kaunti ya Tranzoia Samuel Jwangi idadi kubwa ya Kenya walifungiwa nje kwenye usajili wa huduma namba kwa kukosa kitambulisho cha kitaifa. Ivo amewataka wa Kenya hao kufanya hima na kukumbatia mpango utoaji vitambulisho lilioanzishwa na serikali. Hivi majuzi tulipokufanya ile mpango wa kusajili watu wetu kwa mpango wa huduma namba. Jambo moja ambayo ilikuwa shida na watu wetu wengine hawakusajiliwa kwa huduma namba. Ilikuwa ni kwamba hawakuwa na kitambulisho. Na kwa sababu serikali kama vile mkurugenzi wa usajili usajilishaji wa watu wetu wapate kitambulisho amesema mbele yangu ya kwamba hivi karibuni tunataka kuanzisha awamu ya pili ya kusajili watu wetu kwa huduma namba. Na ndio mtukufu rais akaamua ya kwamba tuanzishe kusajili watu kwa haraka kwa siku 
wapate kitambulisho ili baada ya hapo tutawasajili kwa huduma namba huduma namba kwa huduma bora huduma namba kwa nini Mpango huu lingoanga tarehe mbili mwezi huu na unatarajiwa kukamilishwa chini ya siku 30 zijazo na kuwezesha wakenya waliofungiwa nje kushiriki awamu ya pili ya huduma namba Wakti huo wa Kenya wakiendelea kusubiri takwimu kamili ya sensa kutoka kwa mamlaka ya kitaifa ya takwimu nchini KNBS, viongozi wa kaunti ya Transoya wameendelea kushikilia msimamo mkali kuwa hawatakubali kamwe kugushiwa kwa idadi kamili ya wanatranzoya na hivyo wanatarajia idadi yao kuwezesha kupata keki kubwa kutoka kwa zina kitaifa. David Kapoloman ni mwakilishi wa wa Sabauti. Bwana sipokuwa tunapata 10 billion na sisi tunapata 7 billion. Pungua mwana tunapata 11 billion na sisi tunapata 7 billion. Tumekuwa tukijiuliza ni kwa nini? Kumbe walifanya hesabu na ukakata hesabu yetu. Lakini leo wamehesabu watu yote. Tulikuwa nauliza watu, wewe ulisabili 2209 na kusema hata sikuona hiyo watu. Lakini leo 2019 naona hesabu ya watu yetu hapa Transoya iko kamili. Kwa hivyo rasilimali kutoka Nairobi kikuja hapa leo tutashinda Bungoma. Kandona hayo mbunge wa Saboti Kalebo wa Misi kupitia meneja wa bunge hilo Luke Naibe ameendelea kudai fidia yako kwa kazi wa shamba la Soronso waliofurushwa. Bwana komisha na tunapoongea hivyo unajua mambo ya ex Soronso. Juzi mheshimiwa Tobiko, mheshimiwa Matiangi na mheshimiwa Farida Karonei, mawaziri wamekutana kuhusu mambo ya ex Soronso farm. Na ni minutes tu ijafika katika kaunti yetu, pengine pia utatusaidia kufuatilia na ikapitishwa kwamba wale wangwana wa ex Soronso jambo la kwanza serikali imejitolea kupitia kwa waziri Farida watu wetu waweze kufanyiwa compensation wapewe shamba mbadala alternative land watu hapo ex Soronzo. Alafu mwisho pia wawe ni cooperated kwa ile program ya Pelis hapo kwamba pia walime shamba system wakitafutiwa nafasi mbadala. Kwa hivyo bwana commissioner utafuatilia hapo ili tuache hii mambo ya conflict kwa sababu watu wetu wanaumizwa hapo wamekaa over 15 years wakiwa nje. Inadaiwa ni zaidi ya familia 250 zilizofurushwa katika kipande hicho cha ardhi chenye kari 600. Ni mpango ambao unalenga kuwezesha wananchi kupata huduma za serikali kwa uraisi. Ikumbuko wamekuwa na wakati mgumu wa kupata huduma za serikali. Nikiwa na bunge la Saboti katika kaunti ya Transoya ni Kiarifia TV 47. Jina langu ni Boniface Barasa. Naam, mtazamaji, shukran sana Boniface Barasa kutoka kaunti ya Transoya na sasa hivi moja kwa moja tuelekee hadi kaunti ya Wajia ambapo Wapiga kura kutoka wadi ya Batula wajia kaskazini leo hii waliandamana kwa kutaka spika wa kaunti kutangaza uchaguzi mdogo wa wadi hiyo baada ya mahakama ya upeo kufutilia mbali matokeo ya uchaguzi uliopita. Huyu hapa Isadin Haji kutoka kaunti hiyo na taarifa hiyo kwa kina. Wapiga kura kutoka wadi ya Batalu ya Wajia Kaskazini waliandamana baada ya spika wa bunge la kaunti ya Wajia kukataa kutii amri ya mahakama kama ilivyodokezwa na mahakama mwakilishi wa wadi ya Batalu alishinda uchaguzi huo kwa njia isiyo halali Tulianza kuanzia magistrate court hapa Wajia tulienda mpaka Supreme Court ambayo tulishinda tarehe saba mwezi uliopita na kulingana na sheria spika yako na siku ishirina moja ya kumaliza hii kazi na ishe mara moja tufanye turudie kupiga kura kama wanavyodaiwa kazi wa Batalu tarehe sita mwezi uliopita mahakama kuu ya Kenya iliamuru spika wa kaunti ya Wajia kutangaza kiti cha wadi ya Batalu wazi jambo ambalo wakazi wa Batalu wanadai spika hakufanya sababu ya ukabila yake na ubinafsi ambaye anapewa pesa compromise anaendelea kutuhujumu kazi ambayo tungemaliza bainao sasa tunamwambia na hii ndio mwito yetu ya mwisho. Hakuna siku ambayo tutarudi nyumbani mpaka siku ile tutahakikishiwa IBC wametupatia tarehe ya kura. Hakuna kazi itaendelea katika assembly, hakuna kazi itaendelea katika champus itakuwa day in day out. So tunataka kujua kama speaker kitu ambacho Supreme Court on 6 August wamedeclare hata hawana hawana jurisdiction ya kusikiza hiyo case. Na speaker saa hii yeye ndio ako na nguvu amesema atakalia hiyo kiti. Amesema yeye hawezi weke hiyo signature mpaka ifike the other election 2022. Tunataka kutafuta kiatu atie leo peke yake hata kesho tutatembea hivi. Kesho kuta tutatembea hivi. Mpaka apeane hiyo barua sign. Sisi tuko tayari kutembea week mezi mzima. Ndio. Saa chache baadaye wawakilishi wa wadi pamoja na naibu speaker wa kaunti ya Wajia walikutana kwenye mkao ya bunge hilo hapo ndipo naibu wa speaker alitangaza kiti cha wadi ya Batalu wazi hata hivyo 
Naibu wa spika alisema walipata barua kutoka mahakama kuu siku chache iliyopita. There are rumors that the people are accounting from 6 of August. That was when the time you know that was declared by 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 the court by the Supreme Court. So they are counting from 6 of August of which actually it is not that way. And their interpretations was wrong. Whenever we, when we receive the certificate that is on 2nd they could have counted from 2nd of I mean 2nd of September to 21 days. So we have declared within a period of 3 days we are in the limit we are in the confine of the limit of those period. Hata hivyo uchaguzi mdogo utafanyika katika wadi ya Batalu baada ya nafasi hiyo kuwekwa wazi. Litakuwa ni jukumu la kila mgombeaji kufanya kampeni huku tume huru ya mipaka na uchaguzi IEBC ikitarajiwa kuweka tarehe mwafaka ya kufanya uchaguzi huo. Esedil Haji TV47 katika kaunti ya Wajia. Naam Andrein kutoka kaunti ya Wajia sasa hivi tunaona kuna nafasi ya wa wadi ambapo mwakilishi wadi mpya anafaa kuchaguliwa katika maeneo hayo ya batalu lakini hadi sasa hivi speaker hajaweza uh, hajaweza kufanya la kutosha kuhakikisha kwamba anasema uchaguzi ufanyike jambo ambalo bila shaka ni kukiuka haki za wakenya nam bila na... shaka ni kukiuka haki za wakenya lakini tunatumai hilo litaweza kutatuliwa okay. mtazamaji kumbuka unatazama taarifa za upeo wa TV47 awamu ya saa tatu na unaweza kuzidi kufuatilia taarifa hizi kupitia mitandao yetu ya kijamii ambayo ni at tv 47 ke at kilemi underscore andrin na at underscore clifford. Na bila shaka mtazamaji tusonge mbele na taarifa zetu ambapo watu elfu ishirini huwaga dunia nchini kila mwaka kwa kukosa matibabu bora. Serikali uh, inapania kuzidisha ushirikiano baina yake na sekta ya kibinafsi ili kuboresha hudma ya afya nchini. Sasa yupo mwanabari wetu Zipora Siokau na mailezo zaidi. Changamoto nyingi zimekumba wizara ya afya katika kuwasilisha huduma ya afya bora. Ripoti zimedhihirisha kuna upungufu wa madawa, vifaa vya hospitali na idadi ndogo ya maafisa wa kliniki na nyinginezo. Kwa mujibu wa kupunguza visa vya vifo vya wagonjwa hospitalini, serikali imeshirikiana na sekta ya kibinafsi kuboresha huduma ya afya nchini. Katika kongamano la Wizara ya Afya na Sekta ya Kibinafsi, Waziri wa Afya Sisile Kariuki aliarifu mchango mkubwa ambao sekta ya kibinafsi umechangia kuokoa maisha. We have what we call the managed equipment service today in Kenya. Um, it is a project which has enabled the government to position equipments, diagnostics. We have MRIs, we have CT scans, we have ICUs, we have set up theaters across the 47 counties through leveraging on investment by the private sector. And over a seven year period, the government is repaying the private sector firms. Washikadao wa sekta ya kibinafsi walisema kwamba watazidi kuboresha huduma ya afya ili wananchi wafaidike. And we want to make use of this movement to ensure that every East African living in every country which are 10 we consider 10 gets access to quality health care whenever they need without financial hardship to see families moving into poverty because of catastrophic expenses is unacceptable. To see a child not able to live a full life simply because of no care is unacceptable. To have maternal mortality where a woman has to lose a life while giving life in East Africa is unacceptable. And it's no longer whether it's the private sector or public sector doing it. It is us together. Ushirikiano huu baina ya Wizara ya Afya na sekta ya kibinafsi unatarajiwa kuwezesha serikali kufikia azimio lake la kupeana huduma ya afya bora kwa wote. Nikiripotia TV47 Mini Zipora Siokau. Shukran Zipora Siokau kwa taarifa hiyo. Kwingineo kuni kwamba wakazi wa Korogosho hileo 
wamemkia kisa cha kuhuzunisha baada ya kupatana na mwili wa mtu ukielea mtu Nairobi. Nam, na mwana habari wetu Zablon Mashari aliweza kufuatilia taarifa hiyo na kutuandalia taarifa ifuatayo. Ilikuwa asubuhi na mapema ambapo kikundi cha kufanya usafi katika mtu wa Nairobi eneo la Korokocho walipopatana na mwili wa mtu kielea katika mto huo. Mwili huo uliopatikana ulikuwa makatikati ya mto unasemekana kukaa kwa maji kwa siku kadhaa. Polisi wa kituo cha Kenyago walifika na kuutoa mwili huo na kupeleka katika hifadhi ya maiti ya siti. Kulingana na kikundi cha Cop Green, sio mara yao ya kwanza kupatana na maiti wakiokota na vijusi vingi vinavyotupwa kwa maji. Sha mto leo venye tulianza kazi tukapatana na mwili ya mtu mkubwa karibu umri ya 36 years old na ni mwanaume. So tunadhani ile mvua ilinyesha juzi ndio imemteremsha hapa chini na ni challenge sana kwa kwa team yetu ya Comp Green Solutions. Tunapitia changamoto changamoto mingi sana na tunaomba yenyewe tunaomba serikali ipia ingililie kati ya ishughuli ya kusafisha muto wasifanyi wasiachie tu county government peke yake. Mili ya watu imekuwa ikiokotwa mitoni hapa jijini Nairobi tangu operation ya kaunti ya Nairobi kusafisha mito. Katika mwezi wa Mei, mili ya watu tisa ikiwemo watu wazima na watoto ilipatikana kwa mito. Zablon Mashara Runinga ya TV47 Nairobi. Nam mtazamaji baada ya taarifa hiyo ya kusikitisha basi upewa TV47 utaweza kuchukua mapumziko mengine mafupi. Lakini kumbuka mitandao ni tupo. Naam kwenye mitandao kumbuka taarifa hizi moja kwa moja kupitia tovuti yetu maridadi ya www.tv47.co.ke na vile vile mitandao ya kijamii kwenye Twitter ni at tv47ke at @cliffordke na vile vile at @kilemi_andrin. Usiende mbali. Wiki hii kwenye sauti yetu. Mwimbaji vile vile mwendeshaji boda boda. Sana ya vyuma. Kuna wakati nijiponea sana kidogo ninge ningeuliwa kwa sababu nilikuwa nimeiba ground nuts peke yake. Hadithi yake na nyimbo zitakupa matumaini. Usikose kutazama sauti yetu kila siku ya Jumamosi saa 3:30 asubuhi. Sasa. Nipe countdown. Two, one. Na kuletea matangazo moja kwa moja kutoka kongamano la sita la ugatuzi hapa Kirenyaga County. Hapa ni mjini meru. Tupo katika neo la wetevi ya county ya kiambu. Hivi leo tuko Nairobi Cinema. Hapa ni kina. Ukipenda kina ngo.
usiwache hiyo timu ipate kama huyu amekataa tafuta mwingine maisha isonge mbele mabadiliko haya yangali yanazua msuke msuke baina ya washika dau baadhi ya changamoto hizo zilikuwa ni kama vile ukosefu wa maarifa wameweza kupeperusha bendera ya Kenya tutaingia kwenye mapumziko kidogo chazi Na hii mpenzi mtazamaji ndio TV 47 Macho na sauti yetu mtazamaji karibu tena kwenye upeo wa TV47 makala ya saa tatu. Na mtukisonga mbele na taarifa zetu mtazamaji ni kwamba takriban wasichana mbili na kumi kutoka wadi ya Kisumu wamefanikiwa na mradi wa kujiunga na vyuo vya Anwai. Huu ni mradi wa serikali kupitia kwa afisi ya mwakilishi wa kina mama eneo la Kisumu. Ni mradi wa serikali kupitia kwa afisi ya mwakilishi wa kina mama Hivi leo amezindua mia pili ya kuadhamini wasichana ambao hawakufaulu vizuri katika masomo yao ya shule za upili. Mradi huu unawalenga wasichana 30 katika kila eneo bunge hapa kaunti ya Kisumu. The second edition of our program and it's a program to empower young girls, girls who have not been able or girls who did form 4 but who did not achieve grades good enough to take them for higher courses and i'm talking about girls who got grades like in the categories of d and e and the main philosophy is sometimes you might not be endowed with uh, the brains for all the, the 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 class subjects but probably you you are able and you're talented in in skills or 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 activities to do with your hands so we are giving them an opportunity in skill and vocational training last year we had 210 girls go through that training uh, so that they could self empower themselves and so that they could also be self reliant i'm happy to say that 65 of those girls are already already found employment in the industries where they went to do their attachments kulingana na mwakilisho wa wanawake mradi huu unanuia kuwakomoa kutokana na mimba sawia na ndoa za mapema um the the reason why we've zero did on girls as opposed to mixing girls and boys is because in our county which is Kisumu county girls are exposed to so many dangers we have high cases of sexual based violence we have high cases of pregnancy of girls getting pregnant before they are married and basically just because after form 4 they are left to stay in the homes with nothing to do so we try to give them an opportunity that could engage their time and an opportunity that could give them a uh, meaning of life so that they 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 shun things the activities that would lead to early pregnancy before they are married and this is why we are zeroing in on the girls although we have other activities that we do with a boy child yes mradi huu aidha umegarimu serikali kiasi cha shilingi 1035 kwa kila mwanafunzi vile vile serikali inanuia kuboresha maisha ya wasichana zaidi ya 1000 chini ya miaka mitano The costing is solely by NGAF which is the National Government Affirmative Action Fund which is the National Government Fund and uh, that that comes through the office of the woman representative we've costed it the costing is almost 35000 per child and uh, that includes tuition that includes accommodation that includes examination fee that includes insurance during the three months when they are going for attachment At the end of five years we are looking at having 1000 girls whose lives would have actually been wasted to have been fully empowered with some skill that is relevant daniel dembede tv47 county ya kisumu nam clifford naona ni mfano wa kuigwa kutoka kaunti ya Kisumu uh, iwapo wanafunzi wataweza kufanikiwa na mradi huo. Naam, wajua uh, wanafunzi mbili na kumi katika wadi moja uh, mzigo wa kulipa karo kwa wazazi sasa utakuwa umepunguzwa. Bila shaka utakuwa umewaondokea maana najua ni mzigo sana kwa wazazi lakini lazima maisha yasonge mbele au vipi? Kabisa. 
Tukiachana na taarifa hiyo mtazamaji ni kwamba wenyeji wa Rostamine kwenye kaunti ya Kakamega wamo katika hatari ya kupata magonjwa ya mlipuko iwapo serikali ya gavana Wycliffe Oparanya haitasitisha shughuli ya kutupa takataka katika eneo hilo. Mulindi Keri amezuru kijiji cha Mulombole huko Rostamine na kutuandalia taarifa ifuatayo. Hapa ni katika kijiji cha Mulombole eneo la Rostamine kwenye kaunti ya Kakamega. Jahil la takal na wakera wenyeji hapa. Miaka sita iliyopita serikali ya gavana wiki paranya itenga sehemu hii kwa ajili ya kutupa taka. Vile hawa walikuja wakatuambia wanatafuta mahali pa kuweka hii takataka hii walikuja na mambo mingi. Wakatuambia kwamba kuna chupa zitatupwa hapa watatufanyia recycling. Watoto watapata hapa kazi. Alafu mbo nini yenyewe mchanga yenyewe wataitengeneza wata wataikonvert wata ikuwe mbolea. Tukao tumefurahia kwamba itatusaidia. Wenyeji walikusudia sehemu hii itakuwa na manufaa kwao kwa kutoa nafasi za ajira lakini sasa imegeuka karaha. Hapa kwa takataka takataka imeja watoto wetu wako wanaweza kupata kipindi pindu hata sisi wenyewe. Mfue ikinyesha inateremusha takataka kwa manyumba. Kuna mambo mbingi ambayo inafanyika hapa watoto wetu wanakuja hapa wadogo wa miaka tatu ine wanapata condoms wanafikini balloon. Wanaweza kuchasea kwa mdomo wanapata magonjwa. Kwa uchumula hata ukitaka tuka hatuna kwa sababu ya hii uchafu. Hakuna hoteli, hakuna hata tingatika ya kusiaka kwa sababu mtu akileta hapa. Itakuwa na shite kwa sababu hakuna wateja kwa sababu uliokopa kwa sababu ya hii takataka. Ina takataka ambazo sinatupu hapa, kuna zile gondom ambazo watoto wakitoka shuleni uwa wanasichukua wanasiweka mtomoni. Ombilao kwa idara ya mazingira kwenye kaunti ya Kakamega ni moja tu kuhamisha takataka hii kwingine ili kuzuia athari zake kwa wenyeji. Tunaomba mtoa hii uchafu hapa afadhali mtafute mahali pengine. Kwa sababu kumeja, tutafanya na mna gani? Sasa umbiletu kama village tunaomba kwamba serikali ito, ito hii dumping site huku kwa sababu tume maintain siku mingi. Walituambia wana, wanafanya kazi kwa maka moja, saa hii inaenda inaenda miaka sita matrela na magalori kubwa kubwa za kubeba hii taka pia inapita katika barabara hii na hii barabara imekuwa ina mashimo mabonde hata hivi karibuni wananchi wa Rostaman tunafikiria tufanye maandamano tukuje tupande tulime hii barabara yote tupande nduma tupande ndizi kwa maana sasa hata hii barabara si barabara tena imekuwa sasa ni shamba wenyeji wa hapa Rostaman wako katika hatari ya kupata magonjwa ya mlipuko iwapo serikali ya kaunti ya Kakamega haitaondoa takataka hii hapa Mulindi Keri TV47 Kakamega. Na msasa hivi tukitoka katika kaunti ya Kakamega moja kwa moja tudunde viwanjani ambapo timu ya taifa ya mchezo wa soka Harambe Stars uh, imeendeleza mazoezi yake kwa maandalizi ya mechi ya kirafiki weekend hii huku mshambulizi wa klabu cha Zesco United Jesewere akiwa na matumaini ya kujumuishwa kwenye kikosi kitakacho shiriki mechi hiyo. Jesse Were ambaye ndio mwanzo tu anarejea kwenye kikosi cha Stars baada ya kuwa kwenye ukame wakati wa kocha Sebastian Minye anakiri kibarua cha Jumapili kitakuwa kigumu ila anasema wapo imara kupambana na kikosi cha Uganda Cranes kinachojumuisha wachezaji wengi walio shiriki mashindano ya bara Afrika ya mwaka 2019. Ah uh, nice vizuri. Ah uh, uh, nimerudi kwa kwa, kwa team but uh, mingi ya kunita kwa jili najua alikuwa na wacheza jungina ambao anawatumia so siku sikia vibaa lakini uh, ilikuwa changamuto changa kwangu ili nirudi ni nijikaze kama uh, nionekane za rudi kwenye we na ndoyo ni merudi ni kauli anayunga mkono Michael Olunga ambaye atakuwa kapiteni wa kikosiki wakati huu ambao Victor Wanyama hayupo nae pia hakiwa na matumaini kuwa stars watasajili ushindi kwenye mechi hiyo I think it's my responsibility as a player uh, because uh, I've played in the national team since 2015. There's a lot of young players, you know, coming into the side. Uh, we have experienced players, you know, who have not reported due to one reason or the other. Just to step up, you know, and fill the void, you know, left by our able captain, Victor Wanyama. And uh, I'll try to lead by example come on Sunday, you know, try to give my level best, try to hunt for the goals. And uh, let's see how the first game will go. Akizungumzia kukosekana kwa baadhi ya wachezaji wa zoefu kwenye kikosi cha Stars, kocha mkuu Francis Kimandi amesema hii itakuwa fursa kwa chipukizo waliopewa nafasi kudhibitisha uwezo wao. Ni mambo na na uzoefu, sisi wote tumepata uzoefu sawa. 
nafikiria kile kitategemea Jumapili ni wao pia najua wanafikiria vile kidogo watawapa pia wachezaji wengine nafasi wa wajaribu tuna wale wachezaji tuliona kwa kweli na wao pia hiyo hao ni wachezaji ambao sasa tunajua tuko na wachezaji wangapi ambao wanaweza wao pia najua wanataka kidogo kushinda mechi pia si tunataka kushinda mechi but muhimu ni sisi tuna lengo tofauti tunataka kuangalia wale wachezaji tuko nao hasa wa nyumbani ambao tulikuwa tunafikiria tungewapatia nafasi tuko nao hapa na watapata nafasi tuone nini unaweza kutupatia Stars watacheza mechi ya Krafiki dhidi ya Uganda siku ya Jumapili ugani kasarani kuanzia saa kumi jioni ni Kripoti TV 47 ni Tebosco Ambunda Huku akiwa na kibarua kizito cha kupigania nafasi ya kushiriki mashindano ya kombe la dunia la raga la mwaka wa 2021 nahodha wa timu ya taifa ya kinadada wa mchezo wa raga Fila Orlando anasema iwapo mikakati mwafaka itawekwa vijana hao wana uwezo wa kufanikisha ndoto ya kombe la dunia sasa Lioness uh, Lionesses watacheza na mshindi kati ya Colombia na Brazil kwenye mashindano ya mchujo wa wakufuzu kombe la dunia tukipata mazoezi poa na tupatie ma games different in different countries tuone kama itatusaidia tu wako na strength and weaknesses eh friendly zitatusaidia nilivyo venye nilivyo tu sema baadaye like uh, team yetu imebeba senior na junior so hiyo combination wana need kucheza more games ndio at least itusaidie tusipocheza more games tena tukuje tupate game ngumu hatutafanikiwa lazima tu, tuzoe kucheza na tuzoe kupigwa kwa 15 ni game ngumu si kama 7 7 kuna venye sasa hii tushai master na tumeelewa at least tunaelewa structures kila kitu iko sawa so moving into 15 we need more games we need more games itatusaidia kufika hiyo world cup Nam mtazamaji kilicho na mwanzo bila shaka hakina budi kuwa na mwisho na sasa hivi tunafunganya virago vya upeo wa TV47 tukikuacha na vipindi vingine ambavyo ni vya kuburudisha lakini kumbuka hapo kesho Andrin Kilemi Nam. mtazamaji watamka na kipindi kipi uh, hapo kesho mtazamaji kama kawaida kila siku ya wiki tuna TV47 macheo tutakuwa na bwana Sudeis Oladipo pamoja na Corazon Safan ambao watakuwa wanatujuza mengi tu kuhusiana na mambo ma, masuala ambayo atakuwa kwenye magazeti baada ya hapo tutakuwa na tutakuwa na kipindi cha Friday edition mm -hmm. na ye Anji alafu vile vile mida ya sita nitakuwa na jajaa hapa hivi kwenye matukio nyanjani saa sita hadi saa na baada ya matukio nyanjani tutakuwa na taarifa za saa saba mchana kisha kidogo tutaingia kwenye masuala ya biashara hivi na binti moja Lucy Raili kwenye Days kipindi counter. cha Days Counter. Mm -hmm. Aha baadaye baadaye tutakuwa na ye uh, Fiona Kenga na jamii na itikadi. Mm -hmm. Na mtazamaji basi kumbuka hapa TV 47 tumekuandalia mambo kemkem. Kumbuka katika tovuti yetu basi tutakuwa na www .tv47.co.ke kwenye Twitter ah uh, utanifuata kwenye n@clifordke na vile vile @tv47ke na vile vile mtazamaji kumbuka uh, kwenye mitandao ya kijamii sana sana tuko katika tovuti yetu ambayo unaiona kwenye runinga yako Twitter tunayo hapo tv47ke ambapo tunakujuza tu kadri mambo yanavyochipuka lakini kumbuka mtazamaji taarifa hizi na zingine utaweza kuzipata uh, kwenye Facebook vile vile sasa hivi ukitazama moja kwa moja taarifa hizi zinapeperushwa kwa kupitia mtandao wa TV47KE. Aha, mtazamaji pia kwenye Instagram hatujaachwa nyuma. Tuko pale na picha zetu hapa kule utakuona tukuata pale kwenye Instagram TV47KE, Twitter kama vile ambavyo tulikuwa tumesema ni @TV47KE na Facebook vile vile kama vile mwenzangu Clifford Ndubi amesema ni at TV 47 Kenya. Na ndio kazi ama ndio shughuli tunazidi kuchapa sasa hivi na tovuti hiyo inazidi kuwavutia tu wengi sio humu nchini sio kote barani Afrika kote duniani mm -hmm. watazamaji wanazidi kutazama runinga ya TV 47 ambayo imekita mizizi kote uh, nchini nchini bila shaka tuko katika kaunti zote na saba ambapo tuna wanahabari wetu katika sehemu mbalimbali lakini mtazamaji kufikia hapo natumai ya kwamba umeweza kujifunza mawili matatu usisahau kutufuata kwenye mitandao ya kijamii lakini hadi kufikia hapo tumefika tamati mwaupeo wa TV 47 awamu ya saa moja 
langu jina ni Andrin Kilemi nami nafahamika kama Cliff von Dubi mtangazaji wa ishara ni Josephine Ouko kutoka kwetu hatuna la ziada kuwa na usiku mwema <tune>